Hello, I'm Chris Falter, a graduate student in data science at Indiana University, and I'll be your host as you learn about the latest developments in open domain question answering, an important topic in natural language processing. Today we will cover the background of ODQA, uh, methods that have been used historically, and the latest innovation, which is dense passage retrieval. Um, dense passage retrieval has had some excellent results that we'll look at. We will look at some of the technical challenges that have been overcome along the way uh, to make DPR successful. We'll look at the future directions and look at how to use DPR outside the lab, perhaps at your business or governmental organization. And we'll close with some references so you can do your own research based on what you see here today. Open domain question answering is defined as the task of answering questions using a large collection of documents of diverse topics. It's a challenging task uh, because it entails several subtasks, natural language understanding of the question, information retrieval of uh, related passages, and this involves search and ranking of search results. And then the answer must be expressed, either extracted from the appropriate passage or perhaps using natural language generation if a dialogue system is desired. Um, while the more limited task of question answering involves providing an answer based on a single passage of text, ODQA requires information retrieval from a large corpus of documents. The corpus can be text-based, such as Wikipedia or a set of medical publications, or it can be based on a knowledge graph, such as Freebase or Wikidata, because open domain question answering has the potential to help everyday humans like you and me to understand the world better. Interest has been exploding recently. A large number of ODQA benchmark data sets have become available, and key players are pouring funding and effort into the field. Let's take a look at the methods that have been used in open domain question answering. Well, prior to this century, the field didn't really exist, as early question answering systems could only operate over very limited domains and vocabularies. The big leap forward came with this, the statistical methods of the aughts. IBM's Watson used an ensemble of statistical methods to crush Jeopardy human champions in 2012 in a widely lauded feat. However, the IBM methodology is very difficult to replicate due to the expense and time involved. So uh, question answering from structured knowledge bases was made possible by the open source collaboration involved in Freebase and then in Wikidata. It can actually provide useful results, as we see in this summary of Benjamin Franklin, that is based on information retrieved from Freebase. However, the methodology requires a large human effort in designing an ontology and in curating facts so they can be expressed in terms of the ontology. Without this large human effort, automated reasoning fails. Thus, a better way is needed. The best architect, the basic architect, excuse me, used in the most recent systems involves a two-stage retriever reader process. Keywords are extracted from a query and passed to a retriever which uses statistical methods like BM25 to fetch top ranking passages. The passages are passed to a neural reader, which is trained to extract the most likely text span that answers the query. While the approach has made open domain question answering feasible for cutting edge organizations to use on their own data, it does suffer from some important limitations. The retriever cannot use semantic similarities and it cannot be trained. In 2020 comes a new method, dense passage retrieval. Um, I most closely, uh, and I think uh, the most important paper in the field right now is the dense passage retrieval for open domain question answering by Karpuchen and uh, his collaborators. Uh, dense passage retrieval uses passage embeddings to identify the most responsive passages to a query then pipelines those passages to the reader, just as in previous retriever reader designs. The key differences are that pass passage embedding facilitates semantic search, and the query embedding is passed to the reader for its use in identifying the most responsive text span. 
Passage embeddings are vector representations of a passage that contain context and meaning because of the multitask learning used to train the model that produces them. We can see in the example from Google's Universal Sentence Encoder that even passages in different languages can be embedded into a common vector space that permits the best translations to be found between languages. So for example, when your French friend says, Chillon mignon, and you use Google Translate, you'll know they're talking about a cute puppy. The key intuition here is that semantic similarity is measured by the dot product of the embeddings. That's a very straightforward mathematical operation. The passages whose embeddings are closest in vector space to the question embedding are considered the most likely passages containing an answer and are passed to the reader. Dense passage retrieval has achieved state-of-the-art on several open domain question answering benchmarks. However, it does not perform well on benchmarks with relatively small data sets and requires additional training with other benchmark data sets to perform well. Uh, dense passage retrieval also performs better on real questions harvested, harvested from search engines than from questions formulated by trivia experts. I consider this to be a feature, not a bug, because in real world systems that people and data scientists would design, it will be real world users asking real world questions and not trivia experts who are trying to trick the system. That's something to keep in mind though, when you would be performing uh, QA on such a system. Uh, the uh, Karpuchen team had to respond to a couple of key technical challenges in order to make the process work. One, they had to come up with some smart ways to train the question and passage embedding models, uh, which otherwise would be extremely difficult and expensive. They started with a pre-trained model, BERT, to give them a head start. And they also incorporated negative samples as well as positive in order to uh, maximize the similarity between the desirable passages and question and to minimize the similarity of other passages, even passages that might otherwise seem similar due to say, uh, similarity of keywords uh, that might not match in semantic meaning. And um, also note that nearest neighbors is a very difficult um, to accommodate with over large amounts of passages. If you have millions and millions and millions of embedding vectors to find the 10 or 20 nearest um, uh, vectors to a particular vector is quite onerous. Um, so uh, there is a, a new uh, algorithm called approximate nearest neighbors, which has made the search uh, much simpler. And uh, essentially it's a way of using a series of recursive binary steps to divide up the, um, the vectors that are in a uh, space uh, into a tree-like structure, for example. It's not the only way of doing it, but it is one way of doing it. And then uh, to find the, uh, you would just use a binary search to find the right place in the tree that would be closest to uh, the vector, they say a query vector, and then all the passage vectors that are in the tree in that particular location are the ones that would be approximately the closest. Um, of course, achieving the state of art is never a done deal in NLP. Um, already, uh, there have been some, uh, since the Karpuchen paper was released, there have been uh, some improved training of query models using, um, in fact, uh, uh, embedding models uh, rather than uh, BM25 to identify passages that are near misses. Um, it is possible to augment dense passage retrieval with statistical retrieval methods to um, answer some kinds of queries. And it's also possible to use natural language generation for use in a dialogue system.
these are all directions that uh, research is taking now. Um, let's think for a minute about how we can use dense passage retrieval outside of the research lab setting. Dialogue-based search with semantic capabilities can be very helpful or with organizations uh, for organizations that have large case files. Uh, think of law enforcement organizations with complex investigations. Think of intelligence or counterintelligence. Think of electronic health files with extensive notes from practitioners or pa patients. So um, translating, so someone who's doing research in a case today, um, it, using a keyword search system has to go through the cognitive burden of translating their thoughts into the appropriate keywords. And often this is a guessing game. Um, and it can miss semantically matching passages that don't use the same keyword. Uh, so it would be useful, I think, to uh, incorporate dense passage retrieval into a search system over um, a text management system for case files. Um, would not necessarily supplant an existing keyword-based system and might instead act um, as a complementary approach. And so uh, the, uh, the responses from the traditional keyword-based system and from a dense passage retrieval system could be used together and returned to uh, an analyst in order to provide the best possible response. And here are those references from the passage. I hope you have enjoyed this. Thank you for listening and um, have a good day.